So suppose that we have a recursively defined set and we want to prove something about every element of the set. How do we do it? So since it's a recursively defined set, induction seems like an obvious choice. But induction on what? So the way that we define induction, uh, it's used to prove statements of the form for all natural numbers, p of n, right? So some property holds for all natural numbers. But I just said that we're trying to prove a statement of the form for all elements in this recursively defined set, something holds. Okay, so that doesn't, they don't quite seem to match up. Um, now it turns out that you can actually make this work, uh, and you can read about this in your book if you want, uh, where you say, you reformulate the statement to say something about the number of times that you've applied the recursive rule for building your set. Right, so you say something like, for each element that we got by applying the rule n times, this property holds. Um, but there's a, I want to tell you about a much more direct way, uh, a much nicer way of proving things um, about elements of a recursively defined set um, that much more closely corresponds to the way that we define them in the first place. So this is called structural induction. So here's how it works. So suppose S is a recursively defined set. And then we want to prove something. So to prove a statement of the form, in big S, P of S. Okay, so we want to prove a statement that says this property P, this proposition P holds for every element of our set S. Um, here's what we do. So for the base case, and remember a recursively defined set is uh, has a base case where you say here's some elements, one or more elements that I'm going to just say are in my set. And so obviously we have to show that the property holds for those elements. Um, so show P holds for each uh, element declared, or I'll say defined, as a base case. And then for our inductive step, so remember uh, when we recursively define a set, so we give some base cases and then we say, we give some rules that say if you have some things that are already in your set, then we're, here's a rule that says how to build a new thing that's also in the set. And so uh, that's what we need to prove something corresponding to each of those rules. We say, uh, if you have something that's already in your set, and if the proposition P holds for those things, then the new thing that, you, that the rule says you can build, P must also hold for that. Okay, so uh, for each rule, for each recursive rule, used to build S, Um, show that so if P holds for things already in S then uh, P also holds or the new elements constructed by the rule. Or the new elements constructed by the rule. Okay, so that is the essence of uh, proving something about 
every element of a recursively defined set. So let's do an example. Um, I'm going to use the same recursively defined set from the previous video, uh, the set of binary trees. So I'm not going to rewrite the definition here. If you forget, then you can pause this and go back and refresh yourself on what that is. Um, but I want to prove so theorem. Well, actually, before I state the theorem, I need to uh, give a few definitions. So uh, let T. So T in this set of binary trees is a binary tree. Uh, then let uh, I'm going to write E of T to mean the number of empty trees um, that are kind of along the down along the fringe, the bottom fringe of the tree. Uh, the number of empty trees contained in T. So by empty trees, I mean those little boxes uh, contained in T. And I just want to emphasize that in the previous video, I was drawing trees without actually drawing the empty, uh, these empty things. They were still there. We just weren't drawing them. Um, so every tree is going to have a bunch of those down at the bottom. Um, and then, and B of T equal the number of branch nodes in T. So for example, you know, if I have, uh, let's say I have this tree here, um, oh, that's too many nodes. make it too big. Okay, so if this is my tree, um, then E of t is 1, 2, 3, 4, and B of t is 1, 2, 3. Okay. And in the previous video, what we were doing was exactly trying to list all the trees that had a certain value of B, right? Um, so, You might notice in this particular example, uh, there's four empty nodes and three, uh, four empty trees and three branches. Um, if we did a couple more examples, you quickly notice the pattern that there, it seems like there's always one more uh, of these than there are of these. And it turns out that's always true. So theorem for all binary trees in the set B, uh, E of T is equal to 1 plus E of T. Okay, so let's see if we can prove this by using structural induction. Explicitly saying that it's structural induction is not really necessary for the correctness of your proof, but it is a nice way to uh, indicate to other humans what you're doing. So, in our base case, right, we just have to show that this is true, this proposition. So, our proposition is, you know, for some t, p of t says et equals 1 plus bt. So for our base case, we have to show that this is true for the empty tree, that little box, because that's the only sort of base case element that we uh, defined our set B with. So, well, is it true for the empty tree? Uh, it is, because clearly uh, the number of empty trees in the empty tree is one. And the number of branch nodes is zero. And so, indeed, in this case, this 
is one more than this. So, check. Our inductive step, here's what we're going to say. Uh, let T1 and T2 be elements of my set B. And we're going to suppose that uh, this property that we're trying to prove holds for these trees. Then we need to show that the property will also hold for the new tree that the rule says we can construct. Okay, so let these in B and suppose that uh, first of all, we're going to suppose the property holds for T1. So suppose E of T1 equals 1 plus B of T1. And we're also going to suppose it holds for T2. And E of T2 equals 1 plus B of T2. Okay? Now, the recursive rule for building uh, the set, for defining the set B, says if I have T1 and T2, that are both in my set B, then I can make a new tree with a branch node at the top and then uh, T1 on the left and T2 on the right. And we need to show that that new tree is also going to satisfy this property. Okay, then, uh, first of all, so here's my new tree that the rule says I get to build. Well, first, let's compute what is E of this. Well, we didn't add any new empty trees by adding this branch node at the top, right? Um, but all the empty trees that were in T1 are still going to be in this tree, and all the empty trees that were in T2 are going to be in this new tree as well. So the total number is just going to be E of T1 plus E of T2. Okay. Um, now let's figure out what is... Uh, I want to show that this is equal to 1 plus B of this tree. So let's figure out what that is. So 1 plus b of this tree, t1, t2, is equal to, uh, well, 1 plus, what is b of this tree? Well, I've got one branch node, I had one new branch node at the top that we introduced, and then we still have all the branch nodes from t1 and all the branch nodes from t2. So this is going to be 1 plus b of T1 plus B of T2, okay, which is 2 plus B T1 plus B T2. Um, and I want to show that these two things are equal, right? I would like this to be equal to this. So are they? Uh, in fact, they are because we haven't, we still haven't yet used our induction hypothesis which we've assumed that E of T1 is equal to 1 plus B of T1, and E of T2 is equal to 1 plus B of T2. So this, uh, I don't have enough room here, but... Um, right, this is equal to, by the inductive hypothesis, induction hypothesis, uh, 1 plus B of T1 plus 1 plus B of T2, Okay, which of course is equal to this 2 plus BT1 plus BT2. So this is, those are equal. That's a giant equal sign. So, check. Right, therefore, we've shown by structural induction that uh, this property is always going to be true of any binary tree uh, defined in this recursive way.